Hey, what's up guys? Joe Simpson here. Hey, I wanted to kind of throw this out there for the Sonos Arc people who are looking and trying to figure out how to make this thing work with a non-conventional situation. What I have is, take a look here, you can see I have a projector on top, and then if you look to the front wall, there's my screen and my Sonos bar. Now, the way that I've been handling the situation up until now is I have this uh, switch, so to speak. It's an HDMI switch. The original Sonos bar needs an optical input. So what I was doing was using this switch with the HDMI switcher. That switch would peel off an optical output that I could then send over to the Sonos bar. Now this has been working perfectly for me for the last couple of years and I'm really happy with the system. I've got the whole surround system and I've got everything set up working fine. I'm gonna to go to the Sonos Arc. Now the Arc presents a different kind of a problem for me. So I need to be able to get HDMI to my projector and I need to be able to get an arc output to the Sonos Arc. I wish they wouldn't have named the Sonos Arc, but it kind of keeps the thinking simple, I guess, if you're trying to figure out what you're trying to do. But let's jump on the computer. Let me show you what I'm putting together and you guys let me know if you think this will work. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Joe Simpson. I just wanted to ask your opinion today on Tech Wake TV. I wanted to get feedback from you guys. I'm ordering the new Sonos Arc. That is the soundbar from Sonos that has the upward firing channels that will supposedly give you Dolby Atmos capability, but there's a little bit of a catch to that. Actually, there's a lot of catches to that. Let's talk about a couple of things you need to achieve before you can even hear the Atmos separation and extra channels coming through that system. The first and foremost thing you're going to need is a source, and a source is going to mean like either your Apple TV, your Roku, your Fire Stick. Most of us are going to be streaming material, so it's going to be more difficult to find streamed Atmos material. Let's first of all talk about what Atmos is. If you came up from the 80s like us, we had Dolby Surround Sound hit the scene first. That basically put a stereo front left and right channel with some rear surround accent channels. Then it became Dolby 5.1, where it was a center, left, right, a subwoofer channel, and then two rears. So you get five speakers surrounding the person watching the movie, and the point one was a subwoofer. Since then, it went to 7.1, maybe 9.1. There's all different variations of DTS and Dolby HD and all these other configurations of surround sound. Now they have this new technology out there called Atmos, which is a new version of surround sound that is on soundtracks today, which people are trying to achieve in their sound systems. And it's one of those things that it's a little bit difficult to navigate and understand. I think the first thing we need to understand is Dolby Atmos is not like Dolby, Dolby Digital HD or Dolby 5.1 surround. Dolby Atmos acts more like a metadata rather than an actual recorded audio track. And what I mean by that is Dolby Atmos basically speaks to your decoding hardware, either your amplifier or your Sonos Arc or whatever it is is trying to project these sounds to different speakers. And it gives those hardware uh, devices, basically, information or a roadmap as to where to send the various sounds that are coming to it. So the originating sound format or the Atmos encoded let's just call it metadata, has to come from a device. So if you have a Blu-ray player that can decode Atmos and send it to an amplifier, which can pass that on or decode that, uh, you can do that with speakers and an amplifier in, in that traditional way. But if you have the Atmos, which is by Sonos, it's a little more difficult. The way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to take your Sonos Play Bar, have an LED or an LCD TV sitting on the wall, which has either ARC or eARC. ARC is the original format, which is an HDMI, you know, talk back between your TV and the device. And then eARC has just more data throughput. It's more ideal to have eARC than it is ARC, but ARC will still work with Atmos. Now, and that's my understanding. If any of this is wrong as I go through, please correct me down below. The problem is some of us don't have LED or LCD TVs sitting right next to the ARC. So you have to come up with a different solution. And in my case, I have a projector and then I have the Sonos soundbar, the original version one. But that worked fine because all I had to do was I took all of my devices, my Roku, my Apple TV, all those things. I plugged them into a HDMI switch. 
Basically, it's a little box that tells which HDMI to watch. Ver, you know, input one, two, three, four, five. And then out of that box came an HDMI that went to my projector and then an optical cable that went over to my sound bar, which is how that sound bar liked to operate. So basically it worked fine and it still works fine in that configuration, but upgrading to the Atmos bar, I'd like to get the Atmos decoding to the bar. The problem is the projector does not have ARC or eARC, so I can't plug the HDMI into the projector straight into the sound bar like you can a normal TV. So this is what I came up with, and you guys tell me what you think about it. This was my overall ARC plan. What I wanted to do was have the switch, as you see over to the right-hand side. Out of the switch, I need two HDMI cables. I need one HDMI, at least ARC, going to the Sonos ARC and I need one HDMI for the video signal going to the projector. Now finding a switch that has both ARC HDMI out and one HDMI out for video was very difficult. The other thing to keep in mind if you look at my devices, either Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, or the TV box, out of all of those, I think the only one that's really gonna give me the best chance at having Atmos output and encoded material is the Apple TV unlimited movie tracks. So I'm really going out of my way for a very minute range of movies that are even available. But anyway, that's not the point. The quest is the point. So let's jump over from this screen right here showing you what my goal is and what I hope to use to achieve it. Um, if you look at this HDMI switch, let's just look first the EDID setting at the top. There's little dip switches on this box. First of all, if you look at the bottom left, I'm taking you all over the page, I don't know why. First of all, on the bottom left, you can see two HDMI outputs. One of them is out A and out B. The first out A has ARC labeled, so I'm assuming that that's gonna be ARC compatible. So I will be able to use that to go to the Sonos ARC. And there's also a little ARC option button key there. Hopefully that will help enable that. As a fallback, if I can't get the ARC to work, at least I can use this device with SPDIF output or coaxial output for a traditional connection to the ARC if I need to. Um, and I have four inputs, input one, two, three, four. So I don't have many more things than that, and that's fine. I think the way this HDMI splitter or switch is supposed to work as like a matrix, basically it's supposed to be like a dual display output. But in my particular case, I'm using one of the display outputs, output A at the arc section, gonna be using that for audio. The output B is gonna be used for video, and I'm gonna set on the front the outputs for the inputs <laughs> to be the same. So basically, let's say Apple TV is input number two, I'll put output A and B on input number two, and hopefully get sound piped over to the Atmos and video piped over to the projector. Now, after I do all of this, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I set my EDID settings correctly. And I think the one I want is either number three, which is Dolby, and I think it's Dolby HD DTS 5.1, or the number four HD Audio 7.1. I'll try both and see which one works best. Ultimately though, I think when you finally get a signal to your Sonos Arc that is a true Atmos signal, I think the Atmos sign will actually show up. So stay with me on my journey to see if this is going to work. Hopefully you guys are even understanding what I'm saying. But once I get it to work, if I get it to work, I'll share the results and give you links to all of these products below and hopefully give you guys a swinging chance at pulling the same thing off. I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thanks for being at TechWake today. Later.